it's Mary Bartis, the Bartos Group of Premier Plus Realty. And I have the privilege of bringing back yet again, our greatest agent on our team, Mike Skudnick, um, who not only is a phenomenal uh, agent, he also is a phenomenal investor. And that is the topic of today's Really Mary. So Mike, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. It is. And it's great to be selling homes right now in Southwest Florida, is it not? Uh, it's fantastic. It's, it, every aspect of it, whether it's lots or homes or condos, everything is selling feverishly. Fever, I love that word. Well, today what we thought we'd talk about is, Mike, again, let's remind everybody what you look for in a real estate investment and then what you're helping your clients find in a real estate investment from investment purposes, not just, you know, second home, et cetera, but from income producing. So for myself, I look for return. That's the main number one thing I look for. What is going to be my return on investment? A uh, very easy calculation. How much money did you put into it? And you divide in your net net profit into that. That gives you your percentage return on investment. Um, you know, from there, I look at things like um, location. Um, uh, if there's any rental restrictions, you don't want to buy a vacation rental in a place that doesn't allow rentals. Uh, you also don't want to buy uh, uh, an annual rental condo in a condominium building that doesn't allow annuals. And that's becoming uh, more prevalent. Um, so those are the main things I look for. Um, I try to focus on the lower end of the market. Uh, I call it the bottom of the pyramid, uh, looking at studios and one bedrooms. They're going to be the least expensive uh, property, uh, the least expensive to carry and maintain, and the easiest to then resell. And you're going to be looking at the, the, the largest portion of the investor buyer community uh, who can afford that. You know, you did quite a number of those last year, didn't you? Yeah, um, probably about four personally that I bought and yeah. then a couple more this year. Um, I put a lot of my clients into it because they, they love that philosophy. We're going to buy a, a condo on an island in the Gulf of Mexico and pop an annual renter in there. Uh, it's usually like a, say a six to 8% return on the rent. And then of course you have your appreciation, which has been, really good in the last uh, year and a half. But in the last decade, it's been great. Since 2011 till now, uh, most of the stuff that I've accumulated has, has doubled. That's awesome. That's really awesome. Now, there are some other types of properties in, in addition. So that person looking to get a seasonal rental that they wanted to get and you know, use a little bit themselves. Um, you have a couple of properties right now that you have listed. Talk about those a little bit in theory, and then you can talk, uh, you know, more about the property. A lot of people want to be in Florida, but they're just not ready right now. So they want to get into the market, bookmark the market, purchase a property, be able to come down and use it and rent it out when they're not here. Right. Um, and that is probably the biggest portion of my um, investor buyers outside of buying the little condos, the studios and one bedrooms and putting annuals into it, the next phase is the, the bigger houses. And a lot of the people doing the studios and one bedrooms then roll out of those into uh, the bigger houses. But we have um, several um, beach area ones listed. We have one on um, uh, Sea Grape right now for uh, $8.95. It's a great rental. Uh, in the last six months, they've booked uh, $75,000 worth of rentals. So it's just Phenomenal. It is and phenomenal. You can walk to two beach entrances and you can walk to 20 restaurants. And that's what renters want. So when a renter calls, they say, how far is the beach? How far is the restaurant? They want to get here with a family of six, park their car with their groceries, and then everybody's on their own, whether they're walking or biking or scootering, whatever, to all of these uh, venues, the restaurants, the movie theater, the putt-putt golf, the beaches, et cetera. You know, you're spot on. And the other thing is we have one of the largest JW Marriott's in the world. Um, maybe not physically location, but um, income and, and tourists are coming in and out of it. Um, interesting enough, people, now that we're gathering together again after COVID, 
people want to come and maybe not pay the Marriott rates, but they want to stay in a property like the one you just mentioned, or another one we have, several others, that they can walk to that property, but still have the pool and the fun for the kids and um, at a much lower price. Uh, would you agree with that? Yeah, and particularly if you have, let's say, a family of six, uh, you're going to need at least two, maybe three rooms at the Marriott. I tried to stay there this weekend. Nothing available. Nothing available at the Hilton. Um, I ended up staying at the Boathouse Motel, which is fantastic if you've never been there, but it's on the north end of the island. But yeah, the pricing in the Marriott, say 1000 to 1500 a night, is now, um, I don't want to say forcing, but certainly moving people into vacation rental properties where they can stay for with six people for 300, 400 a night. Yeah. So not only does your guest win out, but you win out because you've got this money coming in in an asset that's appreciating for you. Um, right. And then you can roll it into, you know, a personal within a few years, or you can take it up and do another property, um, maybe sell it or put some of the money in there, which leads us to a 1031 exchange. Um, you know, our current president uh, is now having proposed changes that will potentially affect that 1031 exchange and our customers. Mike, I know we still don't know much about it and it's proposed, but right. talk a little bit about what they're thinking about. So at a 1031, hopefully most people know something about it. Let's say I buy an apartment building for a million dollars and then years later sell it for $2 million. I have a million dollar profit in that. If I go and buy another income producing property similar to that like kind exchange for 2 million or more, I can shelter that million dollar gain. The proposal now is saying that any profits over half a million will then be taxed. They're not gonna be able to escape with a 1031. Um, I think a lot of people who are at that higher end, I know I've got apartment buildings in Chicago that we're now listing because of this, uh, because we have six and seven figure gains in them. We need to roll them into something. And we have been purchasing more Florida properties and rolling some of our um, uh, money from Chicago down to Florida. And a lot of people are doing that. A lot of people are looking for apartment buildings. For instance, Naples used to pull up income producing properties on the MLS there'd be four pages. Now it's maybe a dozen properties. Yeah. So, you know, this is a time to sit and talk with your accountant. They, and they may not know anything. They may be waiting for, you know, those changes to go into effect if they go into effect, but start planning. So, you know, like Mike said, we've also have other people that have taken farmland and put it into these properties, which is generational farmland. So it's all profit, right? right? So it's time to really take a look at that. If there's a property that you're ready that you're ready to trade up on, this might be the time to trade up on it. You've got an investment property, it's time to dust it off, put it into something else. Um, you know, we're here to help you. Mike, as always, I love, love, love having you uh, on The Really Mary Show. Um, we'll have Mike's content, be our contact information below so that if you have some specific questions, make sure that you can um, reach out to him directly. You can reach out in this feed. Um, but as always, we want you to be successful here in Southwest Florida with your investments. And we've got the best guy here on our team, Mike Skudnik. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Ciao.